thank you. Wow. It's like being, uh, it's like being Madonna with one of these. It's great. Um, anyway, um, my name's Dan Con. Uh, I'm a, now a developer advocate for Sonotype. They're a company that do lots of really cool things. Um, I've only been there a week. Don't ask what I'm actually meant to do. I don't know yet. Anyhow, I'm not talking about any of that. What I'm talking about is um, basically something that's kind of a cute little toy, but also actually something that's quite dangerous in some ways. It's called the Flipper Zero, that flipping dolphin. Ooh. Okay, cool. <laughs> Helps if you press the space bar. Right, anyway, they called it Flipper. Won your heart. Everyone remember the song, you know, from the old uh, 70s thing? You know, Flipper. Come on. No, we're not really on for thing. Okay, no worries. Well, that's essentially it. I mean, look, who could say no to a face like that, right? What it is, it's a really good hacking tool, essentially. It, uh, you know, it has many tools in one. It's like a Swiss Army knife of hacking. Kind of wrapped around a Tamagotchi. Anyone old enough to remember Tamagotchis? Yeah, you're my people. That's great. Yes! We're all... No, yeah, so basically, you know, it kind of reacts to two things. One, hacking. Two, games. When you turn it off, you get a sad face. Like, it's literally like you're going to kill it. Cries. So I think this is the main thing. You can't turn it off. You want to wander around, you want to capture things with it. What actually is it, though? I'm, you know... No, we're not going to say what that is. We're going to do a warning first. So, looks like a lovely, friendly dolphin. But it looks like a toy. It looks like it can be a lot of fun, and it is a lot of fun. But anything you see, just make sure you get permission from an owner, because actually, that's illegal, and uh, we don't like criminals. It's really bad. So with that in mind, how could something so criminal be so good? Well, because it's not criminal. It's just the activities you're doing. So what is the Flipper Zero? <laughs> It's a hacking tool, but also a Tamagotchi-style dolphin. And it looks like fun, and it is, but you will get into trouble if you don't get permission, so definitely do. What does it actually do? Well, essentially, it listens into things. So what you do is you have your flipper, you listen to a certain signal, which is activated, where, you know, whatever that might be. Rifid tags are a great example, radio signals, QR codes. Um, what other scans can do. You can attach it to the different developer boxes. Uh, so if we see here, that's the... Oh, I didn't know it was there. Uh, that's the Wi-Fi uh, module, which you can actually use something called Marauder. Don't get caught. Um, <laughs> and uh, basically, that, you know, it can use for different uh, access keys. Um, you know, that's essentially what you do. So it's, you can also use it for fuzzing, flashing firmware, the sky is really the, the limit. Anything you can listen into, replay, get that information and use it, that's what you can use it for. And yeah, you know, Wi-Fi connectivity. So do what you will with that, but definitely get permission of the owner of the network, not just necessarily your, your thing. Um, what's in the Flipper Zero? You have a sub 2 gigahertz subscanner. You have a Rifid scanner. Uh, you have an infrared capture. You do have an SK card slot, and that's actually for an expansion pack. Um, the really weird thing is essentially, so when you read their documentation, you basically have an SD card, and it says, you don't need an SD card, you've got plenty of memory. Now, that's the memory you get given, 72 kilobytes free after you load it up. And you can't really do a lot of 72 kilobytes. In fact, when you try and for the first time, do a firmware update. It just says, put an SD card in. <laughs> don't, be, don't be stupid. <laughs> like, so there's very little you can do without that SD card. Um, it takes a 32 gig one. The more you capture, the more you're going to need to store it. Um, should you store it for long term? I mean, that's up to you, really. Should you, you, know, you might be mucking around with your mates. Is that good? I don't know. Depends if your mates want you to store their stuff indefinitely, doesn't it? So it is a lot of fun, as you get, and there's lots of interesting tech within it. But yeah, dolphins are danger. It is fun. It's lots of fun, and this is a problem, right? One thing that I've kind of learned is like I've got um, relatives who have no idea about cybersecurity whatsoever, but they've heard of this, and they love it. 
because it's like, oh my God, like I could do all this stuff, right? And the problem with that is that they don't actually know. Like, does they, everyone here knows about the Computer Misuse Act, right? Yeah, cool. You know that if you don't get permission, you could actually end up in prison, right? It's not joking. Whereas they don't. They just think, oh, no, what? I'm going to muck around with mates and I'm going to do their Tesla. You know, I mean, that's the, that's the thing as well. Tesla cars, right? It's been known to kind of, you can hack them. You can hack older cars that don't have any kind of locking um, rotation. So, you know, you can actually get into those. I remember, I think, um, I think Bjorn yesterday was saying about uh, Keyless Go on the original Mercedes. I worked for Mercedes at that time, as just in the car garage, nothing fancy, but... Um, <laughs> he had like stories of people that had kind of like gone to like eat in a in a like diner and then like see their car go off before a flipper zero existed <laughs> just because they you know they were with their key fob in their pocket and it was just within range and they could just drive down the road great right and then they d couldn't say well we want to stop it because you're already on the motorway it's really bad to stop a car when it's mid motorway right so you just you know that's a lot of these things have consequences I guess that's what I'm trying to say and I say my my relative he, he's like he can't wait to use this so they'd say you do know that this is really wrong right and he's like no no why would you right so I think that's just something that we need to kind of be aware of and probably say a lot more but oh I'm missing a lot of slides anyway so <laughs> what the main thing let's go back to this one then so what fun things can you do with it? Sub two and a half gigahertz scanner. That's a lot of radio waves, right? You can, you know, set off car doors. Uh, you can open and close them. You can open and close your neighbors with their permission. Or not with their permission. I mean, this is, this is the thing, right? It's up to you what you do. Um, one thing that I quite liked was I went to a festival and I kind of scanned my, my entry and then wondered if I could double scan it. Um, which it did kind of work, but I don't know whether, like, I kind of thought about it. It's like, oh my God, is that a hack? And then you realize, mm, probably not. They know that I'm already in there, so it's a bit pointless. So it's, I think with a lot of these things, it's kind of, you've got to think about the use case. I think, like, you know, I think it's quite good if you can kind of highlight it to companies maybe and use it as a tool to say, well, look, this is what I found with it. Can I kind of extend it a bit further to see, it? you know, for example, an entry system for a festival, if you are already scanned in, and then somebody else can use your, you know, you scan your, your RIFID tag, you maybe copy that to somebody else, they come up with their phone, they scan it there, do they let get in for free? Uh, there was actually a festival called Block in 2012 where essentially they used QR codes and scanners, for the, you know, quite a lot of digital entry systems you see now. Uh, the company that did it, it, they didn't really think about sequential uh, rolling uh, tickets so someone just randomly and the QR code was essentially just the serial number so if you were in a group of 10 lads one person bought a ticket nine went in free and that had a huge problem they had Snoop Dogg play there to an almost overcrowded venue the, the actual uh, it was at London City um, the whole place got shut down uh, it was quite horrific um, somebody I know was doing security there they nearly got rocks thrown at them really really bad um, so that's kind of like I guess an example of the flipper zero when it's used for bad you know but also is it really the flippers fault is it really your fault is it actually the fault of developers that don't actually think of these things and this is me saying it as a developer and a developer advocate now um, you know if you if you can break into a car is that the fault of the technology or is this actually highlighting an issue to say I know what, I shouldn't be able to do this. What you should be able to do is go through, roll, a, you know, roll, roll on the key so that this doesn't actually happen. If I can get into a festival for free, that's on you as your security policies. It's not really on me as you know, checking it out. And I, th I think, I guess with the update of the CMA that's happening now, that's maybe something that, you know, on the one hand, you have the flipper, which essentially is oh my God, that's dangerous. And then you have, on the other hand, well, people should be able to test these things because actually we end up with a much better life because of it. And it's finding that happy medium. Do you, do you want people getting in for free festivals? Probably not, the festival will go under. Do you want people to use technology wisely? Yes. And I think that's an important thing, maybe. So, 
this is the other thing. Part of this talk, the other half, was meant to be saying, oh, look, here's all the ways that you can be safe. And kind of reading through it, there's not really a lot you can do about a lot of these things, actually. Turns out I should have probably thought about that before doing a talk on it, hey? Anyway, <laughs> what you can do, which is one. So one thing you can use the uh, flipper for is uh, stealing credit, uh, you, getting credit card information. You can either use it for your own credit card information, or if you were nefarious, you could steal other people's. Um, I think I nearly saw it in action as, as a joke last night. Somebody uh, kind of had a flip of zero by uh, one of the uh, Wi-Fi scanners, and um, you know it was good fun. But you know they're not going to they're not capturing it. But you know that's a very good capture point. You know so as a sensible thing, you can get rifid blocking wallets. Some work, some actually don't. They're just called rifid blocking. You don't know until you really try them. You know um, if you can, I would get one. You know it's just it's sensible security, what's more important, paying 20 quid for a wallet or paying five grand in lost credit card stuff every time someone's done it for like 100 pounds. I think 100 pounds is a wireless unknown transaction now. It's probably going to increase to 500 at some point. I don't have that much money either way. <laughs> um, so that's one thing to check. Um, so most apps now, uh, whether you're banking, they have you know, they'll they'll give you an you know they'll give you an update say like transactions for uh, what what's gone out of your card within the next ten minutes. Um, I get them all the time. So something where someone might be kind of sitting zapping at your interaction with a with a card payer. Well, you can see oh okay did it go through or oh I'm I'm hang me I've got two on that. Why has that happened? You know, would the banks do anything? I don't know actually. That's a good point actually. What would any uh, financial experts in today? No, I should have probably researched that a bit. But would they? Would they? Would they? Would that be fraud or would that be theft? Because normally the fraud works that it's a fraudulent company that's swiping it. But this is an individual that's kind of doing it, so it's not necessarily a trail, right? Anyway, that's something. But yeah, I mean, essentially, for them to not just swipe it, they'd have to probably swipe it, run it through a machine, then take the transaction that way. So you could, I guess, swipe, check it to. An actual machine, but it's it's a bit of thought, but it's it's possible, and I think like being alerted for that 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 would definitely help. Um, yeah, check your keyless guy. <laughs> really do check it. Uh, if you've got a new car, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You probably it's already got it in there, but certainly older ones around 2000, 2010. Anyone got a car around 2000? Anyone got a car? No, yay! This one. <laughs> Go in the environment. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, check your car. <laughs> yes, guy, <go on>. brilliant. <laughs> so that's essentially it. Um, I've realised I've got another 15 minutes. I always do this. Why do I always end talk so quickly? But that's essentially it. Um, are there any questions? I will. I've got to learn to speak quick, a lot slower, I think. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> yeah, really interesting talk. Thank you. I'm always interested in Flipper and how how it's kind of to me. Do you would you agree that Flip the release of Flipper is almost similar to how when HD Moore released Metasploit with the like two thousand over two thousand vulnerabilities just for anyone to to use, and then Flipper's a little bit like like that. Would do you agree? <laughs> that is a great point because yes. I think it is very similar. Th oh, feedback. Um, um, it is a really good point because it makes life easier. It makes, you know, it's. I guess it's moving from. I call them sophisticated attacks, but a, a, an attack where you have to think a little bit in stages as how what you're going to do. It makes it into an all-in-one. Let's fire and forget, or spray everywhere and see what we can do and it, it does make it a lot quicker the fact that the fact that my family that are really not into cyber security tech or anything and just see it as a game that is kind of for me like like metasploit if i showed the metasploit they'd think it was some kind of cool game if i put it wrapped it in a gui and actually called it random hacker game and put it on steam it, you know, they would play it. <laughs> that's that's what I find like quite good. It, you know, the only things really stopping a lot of this is is the human interface that they actually have. You know, 
when when the, when you get to like one button push click kind of stuff, it's you know it's well, it's like deployments, right? Everyone uses Jenkins. It's the same thing. You know, you don't need to know the nuts and bolts of a server to deploy anything on Jenkins. You just need to push a button normally to let's deploy to a whole grid or subset or servers. That's how it works these days. Yeah, definitely. Anyone else have a question? Ah, Jorn, there we go. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction to the flipper. Uh, well, I have one myself, yes. actually, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I might point out that there are the <coughs> uh, this thing is updated every week. The software, uh, new features are installed there, and there are also some things on on GitHub which you can download, like plugins and uh, also stored frequencies. For example, mm. if you are running around seeing a Tesla there, you can even download the frequency because they are all running on the same frequency, opening their charging ports. Yeah. Right. There, there are movies I think on 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 YouTube there as well. And I have had fun with uh, this one. Actually, when I was at Glasgow giving a course, we went to a pub there with some of the participants. And they actually said then, uh, well, how can we be served here? Because no, no waiters were around. But there were a lot of, a lot of these big, uh, big things going, big TVs there. And I said, oh, yeah, w wait a moment. There's a universal TV remote and, well, Actually, we can try that. Uh, is it on infrared? Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so, but actually, we turned off the TV, and then they came and said, oh, TV is off. <laughs> so, yeah, we, you can have in some settings there quite fun with it, and it's also a very cool tool, and you can also, as you said, it's very flexible. So, yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, one, one thing I tried to do uh, in preparation, because it's in, like, I think, uh, Lena Dork Phoenix on Twitter, she'd opened a McLaren with it. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And scary if you have a McLaren, I guess. But you know, hey, get it insured. Um, one thing I tried was with a VW. And no, I couldn't. But the interesting that you say that the fuel cap is the same frequency, because what I found on the VW is that it's a slight, it's like a modulation around a frequency. It's never the exact one. And I thought it was quite a cool, uh, quite a cool little feature. But, um, and I guess that, that's it, it's like, Someone thought about that before why, why they built the car. I mean, it was only last year's model, so maybe that was the thing. I mean, I have a question. Um, specifically... All right. We have, uh, we have a question coming in uh, from Mike, oh. who asks, well, Is go. this just another example of tech flooding the market with no responsibility being taken by the manufacturers for the risk that it introduces? Ooh. Fighting words from Mike this morning. I mean, like, he's definitely here in spirit, isn't he, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this is the thing. It's With any technology, where is, the res where is the responsibility? I would say the responsibility is with the people that actually make the things that can be attacked. You know, and I think there is a responsibility with probably us as people, if we do say this is a really cool thing, yeah, with cybersecurity kind of professionals to say, this is a really cool thing you can do, but here's all the things why you shouldn't do it. You know, I think I'm, I'm very much of opinion, you know, working in tech, you know, for like 10 years, like just because you should, can do something doesn't mean you should, right? And I think like, like you know, I, I, I kind of work like kind of self, I hate that word self-taught, but I didn't go to uni basically before I started working tech and you follow certain um, software guidelines and you want to take or no and or um, to Nikki. you find you know, basically you follow certain techniques without really knowing why you're doing them right because that's the way it's done that's it you don't really question further and what you kind of learn from you know when doing like a kind of what I learned from my formal education was why you actually choose that route to do it and I think that's the same with cybersecurity you know there's a lot of people that do things that don't really know the consequences of why that sort of approach to be taken. Um, you know, a lot of people, for example, when they're early in the industry, it's quite well known. They love the actual doing, but they don't really love the report writing, which is often a lot of, you know, you have to justify your actions, right? Um, so yeah, so yeah, do I think it's Flipper Zero's fault? No. I do think it's, a, I mean, it's a bit of a worry that it did actually get kind of shut down with the customs bit in the US. I don't really know the real reason. I, all I remember is seeing a lot of interaction with Teslas and McLarens, and maybe that was a reason why that import kind of might have gone that way. But again, that's me kind of saying a hypothetical thing. 
It's not really, I don't know the real reason. Does anybody know? Um, and that's it. So I think there is some responsibility. I think it's like with cryptography uh, as well. You get certain cryptographic assets that you can't um, actually, um, you know, the, the, you know, within a country, they might treat it like a, as if it's a weapon. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, I don't think the responsibility is really there. It's, um, it's down to everyone, really. Right. Uh, so Mike has a question. Uh, another one. Should deeper regulation be applied? Ooh, no. I don't like it. I really don't. I don't like, I think, hey, hey, Dan. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really don't like it. Um, I think you should allow people to make their own choices and you should actually educate people a lot better on cybersecurity. And um, how am I doing for time? Okay, yeah. Um, you should educate people a lot better on cybersecurity. You should actually you know, allow them to make decisions about their life. You shouldn't really go, you must do this or you must ban this. Um, you know, yeah, be harder on, you know, I think, I think there's like a lot of laws in this country that are about, don't do this because you'll cause harm to yourself. Well, actually that should be fine, cause harm to yourself. Don't cause harm to other people. <laughs> That's the important thing. That's actually what you should be harder on is actually when you're actually, you know, interfere with yourself as much as you want. You know, don't interfere with other people. And I think that's, that's generally how I feel about that. So, a uh, small final question, and this is the one I was uh, attempting to ask earlier. Um, so, well, less of a question, more of a comment like uh, Bjorn earlier. But um, you know how some, uh, sometimes the flipper, we don't even talk about this anymore, but the flipper is sold with blocked frequencies that everyone instantly unlocks. Mm. So, you know, because of, you know, for example, the FTC, uh, Offcom in, uh, in the US, etc. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty funny that you know they have to put limitations in for it to work, but everyone just unpatches it in five seconds. Nobody, nobody does that, right? No. Nobody <laughs> does that because that would be a crime. -ish. Yeah. There you go. So nobody does that. So I, I, I completely refute your question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, in, in all seriousness, I, th I think that if you, you've got to follow what the law says, however much you might agree or disagree with anything, um, it's up to the person to do that. Uh, but they should probably be aware that they're doing that. <laughs> of course. Uh, same thing with Marauder. You know, Marauder, uh, when you have the Wi-Fi, you know, the Wi-Fi extension is sold as a developer debugging tool, right? What they don't really kind of explain is the consequences of that and then using a script like Marauder which yeah as everyone said you can get all these scripts online they're all great um, but a lot of them are illegal <laughs> they don't tell you that in GitHub it's like you know just with any kind of software you get from GitHub normally it's like hey gee whiz use this thing it's really cool and doesn't actually tell you what happens with the pitfalls of it um, so yeah I think that's that's basically it you should have you know you can't go around selling illegal stuff that's life unfortunately Right, well, I think this, uh, if anyone else has a question, we can close it off. Cool. Oh, one, oh, two. Oh, okay. Well, we have time, so let's do this. Thank you. Um, do you think the availability of something like the Flipper has a positive effect on accelerating the development of security? Yes, it does. I, I honestly believe that if you have tools that can break things in ways that people building them have no idea about, then that can only be a good thing. Because it's actually, that, I mean, that's essentially what the Flipper Zero is. It's not a toy. It's not a cute Tamagotchi thing. It's actually a hacking tool. And it's a tool to make things better if used correctly. And that's the important thing. Uh, you know, so when you have like kind of maybe government saying, oh, we're going to all out ban this or whatever, that's, what, that's where it's wrong. You know, it's it's a legitimate tool from a professional to use in a professional environment that they've got permission for. And, you know, and it actually makes, you know, the reason why we have security in, in software isn't because it was thought of, right? That's, you know, it's, it's the trail, right? You build something, someone breaks it, build something, improve it. So this can only improve things, but you've got to let people know about the improvements and hopefully I think like a lot of maybe that will be when you know people are building the next generation of locks in cars. They'll use this tool and they'll try and hack it themselves and they'll make sure it's built better. And we had one final question. 
Actually, no question. Just wanted to say that you're absolutely right. This is a valuable tool if you are in a setting where you have permission to use this. For example, for, I, I use this in, in, with pen tests, actually, mm. because they, some companies do not know that they have older tags they are running around where you can actually enter a building like the ISO 14443, uh, which is actually nothing more than a, a UID. Um, and this thing can also copy these, it can emulate these, but it can also um, co copy these to, to, uh, to other cards and other tokens. So you can even make a duplicate of these cards. And with it, it's the same with uh, MyFair Classic. So uh, they, they all have these technologies and think that we have access control, but actually if I get to, to someone who has access to this, you leave your badge lying on the table. You can simply, it's a matter of seconds sometimes. Sometimes it takes longer, but actually this and this is a vulnerability. So mm. yeah. yeah, so this is, this is a, well, I think this is an example where this tool comes in very handy because you don't have all, need to have all the other tools there. It's all in one. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. I think that works really well, and is also quite a scary prospect if it's used for bad. You know, <laughs> it's an all-in-one tool that does everything. Uh, that's good. Right. Uh, I think we'll close it off for right now. We have our next speaker being remote, so uh, we'll just set that up, and uh, there we go. Great. Thanks, everyone.